<coughs> okay, so you should have a sheet, basic Excel skills, and you can, you can see a copy of it. I'll pull it up so you can see what it looks like. So these are our objectives for this video. And so let's go through them. First of all, we need to be able to open Excel. If you have an Excel spreadsheet, you can just click on it, but let's say you don't. You find some way of typing something that looks something like Excel, and it should find it. Grab a blank worksheet. Okay, all a spreadsheet is is rows and columns where you can put stuff in. And each cell of the worksheet is referenced by a letter or series of letters for the column name and a number for the row. So you can put in things like name, um, color, number, and this could be Sally, Joe, Chris, Red, Green, black, number, some numbers. Okay, so that's what, that's what a spreadsheet does. You can change the name of the sheet by right-clicking and renaming the sheet. Maybe you didn't even know that was a sheet you were working on. But you can have another sheet over here and another sheet over here, as many sheets as you like. And you can go back and forth between them. You can do other things like you can reference this, so this is C2, C3, C4. You could do something like sum of C2 through C4, and that adds them all up. You can have some Boolean, something called Boolean, if you haven't heard of it before, true, false, and false. Notice it capitalized it. This is a way of telling you that when you type true or false with any case you want, it's going to register as a true or false variable. It's not just a word, it's another data type. So there's words that don't mean anything except what is in them. And then numbers, and that you can do manipulations with, and then booleans. Okay, so that's uh, bullet point one, now number two. We need to be able to calculate basic formulas and we need to be able to reference within the sheet and we need to be able to reference other sheets. And to demonstrate that, I have a bunch of bogus data I want to show you. And there's some bogus test scores and final exam. Okay, so I made up some, some bogus stuff. All right. And Inside here, I have some formulas. So for example, here I'm adding up everything between C and K. So let's say some students took an exam with eight questions and the maximum was 12 points each, but they still need four to bring the total up to 100, and so there's the grand total they can get on that exam. And so maybe I want to know per question, what's the average, ans the average number of points the students got and, but maybe I want the median also. Sometimes the median is a more reliable measure, and so I can get the median. Well, what if I want the median for all these things? I can just drag this along. And usually this spreadsheet does the logical thing. It fills in what it thinks you want. Okay, so that's just telling you how to make references within a spreadsheet. So, for example, I could say equals C2 plus h4 plus l24. And it's just kind of stupid, honestly, uh, but you, you can make it be whatever you want. Seriously, if I just click up here, it'll, it should highlight all the things that are going into calculating this value. And again, that's very stupid. You usually don't do something that stupid. But the point is, it's up to you. You can add whatever you want. It's, it's your spreadsheet. Okay, so, so that's how you reference within a spreadsheet. But what if we wanted to uh, make some kind of summary sheet? And I'm going to just take this and drag this over here. 
and say, okay, this is a summary sheet, rename summary. All right, and I want to take the I want to take the names out of the first list. So I hit the word I hit the equals character, which means I'm about to put something other than direct literal typing. I'm going to put a formula, or I'm going to reference another cell. So I'm just going to come over here and grab this guy, hit enter, and then it drags it over. So it's actually whatever is in this cell over here. Maybe maybe I wanted to call it first name, not first then I come over here to the summary, it should just be copying whatever's in the other the other column. And again, it just it does it tends to do what's logical for the most part. Uh, there's always surprises sometimes, but not too bad. Alright, now what if I want to grab in some exam scores? Like exam exam one is in column L, exam two is in column L, three and four are in column L. The final is different, that's in column Q. But all the names are in the same order. So how do I do that? Okay, so maybe I want to do this. So I'm going to say equals. I'm going to go over to exam one and grab the Andy Smith's final exam, uh, exam one score. And then I'm going to just drag this down. But maybe I'm even too lazy to go and grab it that way. I want to just say equals exam two bang L2 because I know that's the cell it's in. And this is exam three bang L2. He doesn't have a score. That's why it's empty. Exam four bang L2. And this one was Q equals exam Oops, I called that spreadsheet. I called that sheet final. Bang Q2. All right. Now this is going to take up a lot of space, so I'm going to click on column C. I'm going to hold down Shift while I click G, and then I'm going to squeeze these guys down so that they don't take much space. And I'm going to take these top guys and drag that formula all the way down so that everything backfills. Okay. But there you go. You can look and you can see that none of this, none of the things on this entire page are directly what they appear to be. They're just referencing other things. And if I change the values on the first page, then those changes will be reflected over here. Because these, these are not, these are just sort of smoke and mirrors. This, this isn't real. It's just referencing something else. If I come in here and type something in, if I change it, it'll get rid of the reference, and then the data will be sitting there for real. But right now, everything on the page is just referencing other things. Okay. What if I want to be able to lock views? Okay, so with small data sets like what I have up here, it's not going to be that useful. But, but one thing that is annoying, like when I scroll, I can't see the top row. So I can just say data, or sorry, view and it's freeze panes. So in some software it's called lock view titles. The most common one is to just keep the top row and then that allows you to scroll down like this. Another thing though you might want to do, maybe I want to, um, maybe I have a lot of data. There's sometimes I have a lot of data but I want to see the names for example. So what you can do is you click on the first element that you want to be free and then you say freeze panes or unfreeze panes. And then it creates two, fro uh, two frozen columns and a frozen row that way. And so now I have the top is frozen, but also I'm free to scroll back and forth like, like this. And the, um, the names are frozen. Okay, so those can be really useful. Now, right now I have everything sorted by um, first name. But what if I want to sort by last name? But I have more than one person with perhaps the same last name. Maybe, yeah, I have two Smiths, for example. I have a Mike Smith and an Andy Smith. So what I can do is I can highlight everything this way, or alternately, I can select the whole worksheet by just clicking on this little corner. Okay, I can just click right here and highlight everything and say data sort. You almost always have headers on your data. So I want to sort by last name and then by first name so that the Smiths are put in the right order. Okay, so now we've got Delaney Anderson at the top 
and instead, and instead of Zorro being at the bottom, Betty Yang is at the bottom. Okay, so that's sorted by last name and then by first name. And you can just undo that. Sometimes you just want to sort something temporarily to get a feel for one column of data, but you don't want to permanently do it. All right, so now we're on bullet point five, although I did talk a little bit about um, these different things you can use. Average. Average is mean. And median, and you can have mode, standard deviation. So what if I want standard deviation for this stuff? If you just start typing, uh, so standard deviation P means population. That's your sigma. And then S is your what we usually use a script S for. Uh, standard deviation, uh, you can use either one. It depends on your purposes. C2 to C27. Okay, and then you can just drag this along and it'll calculate it for you. What about the if condition? It's kind of powerful, but I want you to know how to use it. It's really especially useful for recoding variables. So you may have to recode variables. In fact, let me take this opportunity to um, to grab some data. I'm going to just make some data. And I'm going to do edit, select all, edit, copy. And then I'm going to create a new data file by creating a new text document. I'm going to open it, paste. Any text editor will do this. Okay, and then you just file, save. All right, so now I have some data, but it's not very useful because my computer thinks this is just a text document. Uh, if, if I could convince my computer that it's a comma separated values, then I could say rename CSV. It warns you that your file might suddenly become useful. I know it says unusable, but I always read that as warning, your file might become usable. Yes. Okay. And then I click on that and it automatically knows what to do. Let's say I wanted to recode these variables, T and S, as agree and disagree. And I could say is equal to if uh, D2 is equal to zero, I want it to be disagree, otherwise agree. I probably mistyped something. Let's see what they did. I think I like whatever they did. Now this is a really long data set, so I'm not going to do it all the way down. You can highlight the whole data set and do that if you like. Um, but that's it's a really cool trick. You can use that if switch. Uh, also, you could do something like this. You could say, um, oh, I don't know. I'm going to say, I'm going to do absolute value. I'm going to hand code absolute value just to show you how to use the if statement. ABS works. I could go ABS. That's there. But pretend like it wasn't. If uh, B2 is smaller than 0, then I want minus B2, otherwise I'm going to just put B2. And then that's going to just take those negative signs right off. Again, this is a really inefficient way of getting rid of negative signs, but I just wanted to demonstrate the if command so that you know how you can use it. Okay, uh, column width I think I showed you. If you have a whole bunch of columns and they're getting in the way and you don't need them to be as wide as they are, you can just crunch those down like that. You can make them wider, whatever you want. All right, what about for printouts? I'm going to get rid of this for now. Uh, what about if I want to print something out? What, let's say I want to print out these grades. So maybe I want to print landscape, but something doesn't make me happy. I can't really line these guys up. I, I can't tell. I'm going to be going bug-eyed here. 
So I want to change something. I want to change the fact that there's no lines around these things. So I'm going to just highlight wherever I want there to be lines. And right over here, I can put borders. And then when I go to print it, then I'll have borders right where I wanted them. Okay? So that's a useful trick to know. Okay, what else? Um, oh, yes, wild cards when searching. Uh, what if I want to find Smith? Where does Smith occur? And it should tell me it highlighted Mike Smith, find all, and it highlighted it's going to highlight Mike Smith and then Andy Smith. Mike Smith and then Andy Smith. It might be hard to, to see that, but it's finding them all right. If you had a big file, it would be a little more obvious what's going on, but it finds them for you. What if I didn't know if Peggy has one or two G's? So I can type Peggy like that. I only have a star, meaning I don't know what's in there. It could be Puffy or Penny or Pelly or Peggy. And as long as it starts with capital P-E and ends in Y, then it's going to find that Peggy thing or Penny or whatever it is. So it helps you find stuff even if you only know a little bit about uh, what the thing is that you're looking for. If you're looking for Lamar and you just don't know the, the second letter of his name, you can go Lamar, is it L-E or L-A? I don't know. And it looks kind of like that. And it will find Lamar. So question mark means you're only missing one letter. Uh, star means you're missing some number of letters and you're not really sure. What if uh, I have a problem with my data that sometimes when I see Andy is capital A-N-D-Y and sometimes it's all caps. So I'm going to just make everything uppercase. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say upper of A2. And then I'm going to drag this, um, this whole column like that. Whatever. Okay, and anything that is just numerical is just going to get carried over. So it capitalizes all your letters. And that's very, very useful if you're washing data and you need to get rid of this problem with capitalization. Just make everything capital, and then you don't have to worry about upper and lowercase distinctions. Okay, I do want to show you how I scrambled these names. So, for example... If you let's pretend these are the real names. They're not the real names, but let's say I wanted to scramble them so that I could give them different fake names. Then I could do something like this. Make some random numbers. You could use rand just as it is, and it gives you a value between 0 and 1. That's great, you say, right? I think it's great. And what happens is you create a random sequence, and then you sort based on that random sequence. Only problem is... This is really volatile. Every time you hit any one of these, it re-executes the entire worksheet. The entire worksheet gets re-evaluated, and that's really a huge pain. So what you want to do is you want to actually freeze these. So once you've settled on what random numbers you're going to use, you just say, all right, copy, and then paste them somewhere else. If you use the text option. You want to paste values. And you see, you pasted the correct values, but as soon as you re-executed that worksheet, then your random numbers weren't so random anymore. Uh, so I'm going to just get rid of that column, and then these are my rand, random values. And now I can sort based on them, and if I want, I can copy and paste this random column to all my other sheets and sort them that way. And then I've got a new scrambling. I've just shuffled the deck, so to speak. Okay, so that can be really, really useful, especially if you have data that is alphabetized and it gives away too much personal information if something's personal, if something's alphabetized. So you can get rid of the, alphabeti the alphabetization by just scrambling everything. And that helps um, so that people don't know identities. All right, I need to show you how to export to a CSV file. I can say File, Export. Maybe it's save as. There we go. Save as CSV. 
and it's going to go to the desktop. Now, notice, the selected file type does not support workbooks that contain multiple sheets, which is what we have. To save only the active sheet, okay, that's fine. There's other options, but I'm just saving this one sheet, and then see what happens when I come back in. Here's my bogus CSV, and I can open it, and you can see the formatting is lost. All my highlighting is lost. Also, you know, my my, you know, the fact that I had these guys squished down, that gets lost. So because now it's just a comma separated value sheet. Uh, and I want you to view this in some Word document. There you go. So that's what it looks like. It's just a text document. Anything that says CSV at the end is just a text document. It means it's light and easy and transportable. You can put it in your statistical software. It's a nice, um, a nice type of file. Very, very versatile. Okay, so next bullet point is 14. Create a CSV using a text editor. So I'm going to create new text document It looks like I did that before, maybe not. Uh, I'm going to open with something that you're familiar with, so I'm going to use Notepad or WordPad. And I'm just going to go A, comma B, comma C, comma D. Those are my headers. There we go. And I'm going to change the extension by renaming it. Yeah, 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 whatever. So I have two of them. But see, you open it up in there. It looks like a regular old spreadsheet, and it is, because you just converted it. Very exciting. Um, okay, so... What if you have, what if you stumble across something in your research and the delimiter is not tab or comma? So, for example, if you go to the FCC database and grab down all the ham radio uh, databases that are available, you'll get something that looks like this. And after you try to open it, it says, oh, I hate you because I don't know how to open data files. So then just go ahead and rename that. I'm going to rename it a text file and the problem is I tried opening it with WordPad and it choked on it so I'm just going to actually open it in Emacs and I'm going to say replace string pipe symbol with comma and it just takes a while and then it does it so sorry that's kind of a, a cheesy trick but your spreadsheet software should be able to handle any delimiter, but for whatever reason, um, it's not being friendly with us. But now I can just rename it again to CSV, and now, uh, now Excel has no trouble opening it because all those delimiters are switched off. So there you go. No problem. Just switch the delimiter to whatever it is you want, and you're good to go. Um, Oh yeah, one more thing I wanted to show you because you're going to say, oh wait a second, you changed the file extension and I don't know how to do that because I can't see my file extensions. So I'm going to encourage you to just Google that question, how do you change the file extensions in your operating system? So I'll show you how to do it in Windows 10, but your operating system may be different. So you just Google that question. In my case, I go to Control Panel, Appearance and Personalization. So Control Panel appearance and personalization wherever I don't know appearance okay um, I think this is probably what it is and is it under advanced? Nope, maybe it's over here.
Nope. It's under the View tab. Folder Options. So let's look for Control Panel Folder Options. Aha, there it is. It's under View, and the thing you want to show is Do Not Hide File Extension. So you want to uncheck this box. That teeny little box is it. You go like that, and then you say Apply and OK. Make sure you're not hiding file extensions. And so if you do that across the board, you have the option, I believe, to either change that default for your whole system or just for one particular folder. I would suggest just changing it for your, whole fold, for your whole system so that you can always see and adjust your file extensions. I think you'll find your life is easier when you can do that. And once you can change your file extensions, you can flip back and forth between CSV and text and anything else you want that's a text file. Um, because the computers are really, really finicky. They see stuff that's a text file and they want to open it with something fancy when it's just a text file. So sometimes you have to convince it that it's a text file by changing the extension. Okay, I think I covered everything that was in our bucket list and hopefully this recording worked this time.